Okay, for this problem, we have a situation where we have two sides and a given angle. So this is going to be SSA or side side angle situation that we have going on here. So because of this, we have to solve for two angles this time and a missing side. We still want to start the problem the same as we've done in the previous examples. You want to first look for the known ratio that's provided. That's going to be sine of 40 over 3. That's the first given ratio uh, that we have. In order to solve for one of these angles, we have to set up another proportion. And so we need to take a look at what information is going to be provided. Now, I probably don't want to go for angle C because I don't have a side that's opposite of that. And if I were to set that up, I'd have sine C over C and there's not enough information for us to solve the problem. So therefore, you want to solve for angle B first because they have a two that's across from that and that will give us enough information to solve for it. So that's what we're going to do first. We're going to set up that uh, proportion. We need to isolate uh, the B. So first we have to solve for uh, sine B and we're going to do that by cross multiplying. We're going to multiply these. We get three sine B is going to equal two sine 40. We're going to divide both sides by three and you get sine B equals two sine 40 divided by three. The two sine 40 over three, if you put that into a calculator, you're going to get a decimal for that and you're going to get 0.4285. There'll be some more decimals that come after that. In order to solve for this, since we're now solving for B, the proper technique to do here is you want to take the inverse of both sides. So we're going to take the inverse of this, and we want to do the inverse of the other side. By doing the inverse, that allows you to cancel out the sign here in front, and that's going to allow you to get B by itself. So we've got to do an inverse on both sides here in order to make the equation balance, so we cancel that out and get B. Inverse sine of 0.4285, continuing, you're going to get 25.37 degrees. That's going to be your uh, angle B that we have here that answers this question. And I'm going to go ahead and put it on the diagram as well. 25.37 we got uh, from the calculator. Next, what we want to do is solve for the measurement of angle C. And you can do that if you want to get this one. You want to do that by taking them, subtracting these angles you already have in the triangle, subtract from 180. So 180 minus 40 minus 25.37. Uh, if you do that, you're going to be left with 114.63. Uh, so now that gives us this angle here, 114.63. That's good. We want to find out this angle because we need that in order to solve for uh, side C. You always want to have the angle provided opposite the side you're trying to solve for and so that's going to be our next step is to do that. So um, with this we have to set up another proportion. We're still going to start with the sine 40 over 3 but this time we're going to use that angle C. So uh, hopefully you've got all this down already and we're going to erase this so we can do the next one to solve for side C. Sine 40 over 3, that's our given ratio we began with. Now we're going to do sine of 114.63 over uh, side C, because that's now the one that we're trying to solve for. Cross multiply, C sine 40, make that look like an N, it's going to equal 3 sine 114.63, we're cross multiplying, divide both sides by sine 40, we get 3 sine 114.63 all over sine 40, and if we put that into a calculator with the two decimal places, we get 4.24 uh, as the answer. Now, one thing I want to point out here is depending on what kind of online homework grading program you're using, if you're using something like that, then your rounding on this answer here will affect your second answer. So if you're finding out that it's not liking it because it might be a decimal point or so off, that means that when you find this angle right here, you probably want to keep all the decimal places in both your angles here because then that's going to give you the most accuracy when you put that in. So instead of rounding the two places like I did here, you probably would want to keep, uh, take that out to several more decimal places. So then that way this here, it might be 4.23 or 2.5 and that might make a difference. So uh, in my class personally on a test, it's not going to matter if you're one or two decimal po points off, it's going to be close enough. But again, those online homework programs, they have pinpoint accuracy, so you definitely need to have all the decimals in there to get the correct answer. But in this case for here, we're going to say that our answer is going to be uh, 4.24 and our triangle is going to be solved because we provided all the missing information.